Hey, how's it going people? Brown Brady here and thank you for tuning into my channel. And in this episode, I'll show you how I did an oil change on my Suzuki Boulevard M50 without a motorcycle jack. The M50 may also be called the Intruder M800 outside of North America, which is exactly the same model. This process also works for the VL800C50, originally named the VL800 Intruder Volusia, which was the model the M50 was developed from with slight modifications. I'm not a professional mechanic, but I've owned four bikes and several cars, so I have had some experience in oil changes. But if you're watching this, it means my motorcycle didn't blow up. That doesn't mean yours won't, so follow these instructions at your own peril. First, I needed the following parts and tools. 4 liters of 10W40 synthetic motor oil, an oil filter, an oil drain plug crush washer, an oil filter removal tool, a 14 millimeter wrench, a torque wrench which is optional, an oil drain pan, an oil fill funnel, and gloves. This ratchet tie down strap and blocks of lumber are optional. I will list the parts in the description of this video. And full disclosure, by using the links in the parts, it will give me a little kickback in affiliate commission. The first step was to start the engine to warm up the motorcycle for a few minutes. This will kick up all the gunk that had settled to the bottom of the oil pan. At this point, I moved the motorcycle next to my workbench. This is a heavy structure that is screwed onto the wall of my garage. It would be better to be on a level surface, but my garage floor has a slight slope to it. So after the bike was warmed up, I shut it off and put it into first gear to prevent it from rolling back. I also placed a wheel chalk behind the rear tire in case I forget. Then I secured the bike's fork to the workbench with just enough slack to hold it from going past the upright position. Then I lifted the left side of the bike and placed enough scrap lumber under the side stand to hold it upright. After that, I ratcheted the strap and made sure the strap was as high on the fork as possible so that the bike was not going to tip over to the other side. The higher the position of the strap on the fork, the less force is needed to hold it. Next I placed the oil drain pan nearby, then using the oil filter removal tool, I twisted the oil filter counterclockwise. Using this oil filter wrench, I didn't have enough clearance to undo it from the front, and the handle was touching the floor so I had to twist it at an angle. I ended up denting the oil filter housing, so an alternative tool that can access the filter from the front would have been better. The good news was that the filter was not on very tightly, so after about a quarter of a turn using the tool, I was able to undo it the rest of the way by hand. I then placed the oil drain pan underneath it to catch the oil. Next, I opened the oil jug and applied a little bit of oil on the oil filter's rubber gasket. This helps prevent the rubber from getting stuck to the mating surface when it's removed in the future. It will also improve the seal when I reinstall the filter. Some people also like to fill the new oil filter with oil, but I normally don't do that. Before installing the new oil filter, I checked to make sure that the oil filter mating surface was clean and free of any residue from the old oil filter's rubber gasket. I installed the new filter by turning it clockwise, making sure it was turning freely to prevent cross-threading. When the rubber seal met the mating surface, I tightened it by hand by about a full turn. I did not use the oil filter wrench to prevent denting the filter and over-torquing. Next, using a 14 millimeter wrench, I loosened the oil drain plug by turning it counterclockwise, which did not take a whole lot of force at all. I placed the oil drain pan under the drain hole while unbolting it by hand the rest of the way. While the oil was draining, 
I cleaned the oil drain bolt and replaced the old crush washer with an M12 size copper crush washer. I then removed the oil fill cap and waited a few more minutes for the oil to drain some more. With the bike being supported by the blocks of wood, more oil will drain out from the bottom. The alternative to make your bike stand upright is to just sit on it and hold it upright while the oil drains. Next I replaced the oil drain bolt and tightened it by hand. Optionally you can use a torque wrench to tighten it to 23 newton meters or 16.5 foot pounds, which is not very much. It is so low that it was below my torque wrench's adjustment range. If you are going to tighten this without a torque wrench, use only one or two fingers to tighten it. To reduce the risk of stripping the threads, it's better to under tighten them now and tighten them some more if it leaks. Next, using the funnel, I poured the new oil into the oil fill hole. Here's a little tip. Pouring the oil jug sideways creates more space above the fluid surface for air to enter the jug to replace the volume lost during the pour. This results in a smoother pour with fewer splashbacks. I poured about 3 liters of oil which can be estimated by checking the oil level on the side of the jug. I also confirmed it by using the oil sight glass which should be between the minimum and maximum lines. The next step was to start the bike but before starting it I made sure that the wheel chalk was in place so that the bike does not roll back. I blipped it a few times to let some of the oil enter the oil filter which resulted in a lower reading in the sight glass. I shut it off and continued to fill it again until it was within the minimum and maximum lines. I also checked for any oil leaks in case I needed to tighten the filter or bolt. I'm not taking full credit for all the ideas in this video. The real credit goes to the previous YouTube creators who made their video before this one. Now, if you don't have a bike stand, I'll get your bike. Check the color of your oil. Be sure to use the wife's good white towels for this. She'll love it, trust me. As well okay. as the commenters who gave other useful suggestions. You can show your appreciation by visiting their channel in the description and tell them Brown Brady sent you. Before I end this video, I'd like to highlight the following comment from one of my viewers in my CBR250R oil change video. Randolissimo said, actually no, you should not use any oil in a Honda with a wet clutch system because the crankcase and the clutch share the same oil. Honda recommends only using JASO MA rated lubricants like Honda GN4 or Shell Rotella T4. But what I meant by that was any viscosity depending on your climate and riding habits. In the video I used 10W40 which is a popular choice where I live and for how I ride my bike. On the other hand, 10W30 is a slightly thinner oil which is better in colder weather. It can also improve fuel economy because it's thinner so the engine works a little less to move it. Thank you for your comment. If you have any more tips and suggestions, please share them in the comments section. And that about does it for this episode. I hope you found this video helpful and if you did, please hit that like button and share this with your friends. Or better yet, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. As always, ride safe and thanks for watching. You look like a bobblehead.